Hi, Danielle. Hi. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. I just saw this morning. Oh, really? Yeah, How come you had heels on? How did you grow? Oh. oh. <laughs> cool on my heels for an hour now. <laughs> Nick, Nick, that, that, my starting to three must have been in the first switch. Can you record and I'll hit all signs? I love politicians. Eventually, you get the strength to work. So we can uh, get the camera Oh, yeah? Okay. She's going to come by boat. Oh, he is? I don't know. That would be cool. Somebody's going to bring that. Excuse me. Hey, we going to take a sign? Sure. You're taking a deep pass down. Each going to do 10 things you like. You guys want to take a sign? Awesome. Way ahead of me. I got my bumper sticker on my car. Who did First time there in Costa. Conservatives. Usually I have my hat, which is in the car, my Trump hat, and all my pins. I have Because I, I was up country, I was on cold this morning. I left home there at 5 30 this morning to get down here. It's four much, hours from How much better down below? Yeah, I Holbrook is way up there. Yeah, and that was my last. I don't know I had to do was time to change my shirt. Yeah, because you had all the pins on last time. Yeah, I have a truck ball. Well, I wore my, my anchor shirt for the, you know, the seaside and yes. Eddie's in the Navy, so. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> Just to get in the spirit of that new park in the room. Yeah. 
The president was on with uh, Rush Limbaugh today. He was on what? Uh, Rush Limbaugh show this morning. You know this afternoon? Uh, it was 30 years anniversary for Rush Limbaugh of the show. Trump called him personal. He was cool. Well, he's very resilient. I mean, they give him shit for everything he does, and he just bounces back. Can you imagine? Yeah. He bounces against all odds. Yeah. <laughs> I like what he's doing. What? Never has there been such a round up for a minute. <laughs> <laughs>
coach, served our country ably and very, very well in the United States Navy. He's been a police chief. He's been in charge of liquor enforcement. And uh, he has a very uh, strong law enforcement background, which to me is always a very good sign of somebody who can be a fine uh, politician because they have that spirit of public service, not just politics, the spirit of you know, taking care of people and making sure people come first. Uh, as Wayne points out, he has the live free or die values uh, of a good, strong, really sensible conservative. He believes in low taxes, he believes in limited government. Uh, he's a supporter of the American First agenda is President Trump. He believes that, uh, that trade and all the other issues that have affected America have to be straightened out so that we at least have a uh, level playing field. I think the whole trade issue is very often misconstrued. The president's desire is to have a level playing field, not to have a balance in favor of the U.S. against, in favor of China. They have a tariff, we have a tariff. They don't have a tariff, we don't have a tariff. What the heck is wrong with that? Okay. I want a level playing field. That's going to preserve the most American jobs. And I think Eddie would tell you we should listen to President Trump because his record on the economy probably is as, is as good or better as any American president of my lifetime. Who ever thought we'd be at 4% growth? Even for a quarter, 4% growth. We were doing one, one and a half. We were getting excited when it was two. Unemployment down, way down. Real employment up. The man knows something about the economy, despite. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, he's also, uh, Eddie, understands from law enforcement the value of. Enforcement, enforcement with regard to drugs, enforcement with regard to crime, enforcement with regard to uh, values, and, uh, not values, but rather uh, quality of life, so that you can have a fine community like this. And he understands the problem of illegal immigration, which has to be dealt with. And hopefully, the president's going to be able to deal with it, even though you know, some tough negotiations are ahead. And Eddie will be a supporter of this when he gets into the Congress. Um, so let's look at the other side for a minute. There are two possible opponents. I think the Democratic Party has fallen off the left cliff. C. Joe Crowley, defeated by Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, who is a pretty much an about uh, socialist. Is, uh, and she's done, done. I just don't have any words to describe it and understand it. But you know, if they want to do that, it seems like uh, this is going to be rejected by the mainstream of America, certainly by New Hampshire. So a vote for vote for the Democrat in this election is going to be a vote for a future party that looks like um, to be dominated by by social by social. Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton may have won the primary, but it looks like Bernie Sanders won the heart of the party. And uh, he's the older version, and Cortez is the uh, Casio Cortez is the younger version. And uh, Sure, sure that Mike running against that, don't we? Betty? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, <laughs> we don't think we don't think there should be massive government giveaways. We think there should be standards and values. We think we should do away with ICE uh, because uh, you know somebody may find an irregularity or even some problems. Every law enforcement agency has a problem. The FBI has problems. New York City Police Department has problems. Nobody's in favor of doing away with the FBI. The New York City Police Department has kind of ignorant and also just anti law enforcement. A lot of the people on the far left just are completely alienated by the idea of war. You know it's necessary. So, it's the kind of person we need. A new person to the party, a new voice, a new voice for very, very uh, strong uh, uh, principles that have guided New Hampshire, that have guided the party. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, I have to say this, uh, and I say this in my, in my role not as a lawyer, but as a, as a, as a concerned citizen and, and, and Republican. But this election is going to be about impeachment or no impeachment. And uh, Democrats get control of the House, and do you think they're going to treat President Trump fair? No, no, I don't think I don't think they are either. When you look at some of them on television, traitor, being a traitor, and this and that, you get the sense that there isn't a fair minded, uh, at least large enough group of people there, that we can trust and not to take the country down this terrible, terrible road uh, that we just don't, we just don't need. The most important thing is,
president's doing a very, very good job. He's about a successful uh, two-year president we've had in a very long time on the economy, on engaging North Korea, on uh, engaging Iran, uh, dealing with the problems in the world, on getting money back into NATO. I mean, what the heck is he want? What do you want? You want the guy to do? I mean, we're just winning so much, we're going to get tired. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, let me introduce my president. <laughs> so much, Mayor, for that wonderful introduction. And I, w I really want to thank you so much for being here. I know you don't have much on your plate these days. <laughs> <laughs> so I really appreciate you being here, and I want to thank all of you for being here. I want to take an opportunity to introduce my wife, my primary supporter, my wife, Cindy Edwards. She's been here with me. <laughs> From the very beginning, and as you know, when you enter a Undertake an uh, endeavor like this, you don't do it alone, you do it with your family. And uh, she's been loving and supportive and committed to our family in this campaign. Thank you so much. And again, uh, it's uh, fitting that I'm standing here with the backdrop of the United States Navy. Yeah. Where, I, <laughs> where I started my career right across the river here, what's going to shipyard. And as, you, as the mayor said, I've been here for over 30 years. And uh, I'm proud to be a Granite State. Very proud of that. And I have to point out uh, a giant in our state, because she's sitting right here, Ruth Griffin. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's also befitting to have the America's mayor here with us as well. Yeah. Yeah. As we embrace the American First agenda. I've said this repeatedly, an American first agenda is not an isolationist yeah. statement. It's a statement of love and support for our country. It's about time we got a president who understood the values of our country and stood up for our country. And what we need to do here in the Granite State, because remember, the president won CD1. This is his district. That's right. This is the district won the CD1. They want a, a congressperson who represents their values in Washington who's proud to stand up and support an American first agenda. That's necessary. Also, I am very proud to have the vast majority of President Trump's New Hampshire coalition with me. Now, I tell you, the president's doing one hell of a job in Washington. He's doing one hell of a job. And I can tell you, Record low unemployment for blacks and Latinos and women. Wages are on the increase. And it's ended the penalty for our young people in our country, forcing them to buy something they either don't want or can't afford, and penalizing them for it. It's about time that we get back to American values. And I'm proud that I'm to be running Congressional District 1 to represent the values of our state, to represent the values of our United States military. You know, our veterans represent 1.3% uh, 1.3 million people in the military. That's less than 1% of our population that serves in the military. Uh, I'm so proud that we have a president who understands that and who's willing to do anything to make sure our veterans are taken care of. Yes. Yay. As you know, here in the Granite State, we have over uh, about 130,000 veterans and their families. This is a pro-veteran state. This is a pro-family state. And this is a pro-American state. Sure. So I also want to thank Wayne Zimbrini for his friendship, his leadership. I want to thank Susan Conway for opening up her home to us today to have this uh, great event. So I have to ask you to remember, September 11th is the primary. I need you to show up and support me. I need you to come back out in November to make sure and we turn this seat back into the hands of the Republican Party. As you know, I am the strongest candidate to make sure that the Republican Party recaptures this seat. So I need you to show up on September 11th. May God bless the United States of America, and may God bless New Hampshire. Actually, a free citizen. 
<laughs> I mean, what, uh, the president and I agree on almost all uh, political issues, but you know, sometimes we differ on candidate. I have no reason to believe we wouldn't find this gentleman to be a terrific candidate. We haven't made a decision about this race or whether to answer. No, it shouldn't be in general. Mayor, but, have you but it's my it's my heartfelt. Have you spoken to the president today? Uh, yes, I have. <laughs> does he still does he still personally want to speak to Mueller in terms of the investigation? I'm not going to. I'll, I'll, I'll answer one question about that over there, and then uh, rather than you know, get this all mixed up, I'll, I'll go over there and I'll answer. Maybe I put out two statements along with Jay Sekulow. I'll repeat them. Yeah. Then you can ask me 15 different ways. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mayor, right. in uh, New Hampshire, President Obama's, uh, President Trump, excuse me, excuse me. Oh! Oh! I'll, ta I'll take my butt kicking later, well deserved. <laughs> President <laughs> Trump is underwater 11. Are you, a, are, you, are you a spy in the campaign? No, 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 I'm with the New Hampshire <laughs> Journal. Uh, pre uh, President Trump is underwater here, 11 points. Is it a winning strategy to embrace President Trump here in New Hampshire? Yes. yes. Well, I remember when I first joined his campaign, he was the one candidate that couldn't win. <laughs> we're, in better, we're in better shape than that. Um, I think you know, everybody has to make their own choice. Uh, and Eddie wants to align himself with the president. And he, it's quite clear he sees the world pretty much the way the president does. So um, I, think, I think it will be a winning strategy. Because, yeah. if I may, let me explain something to you. The president won CD1. I'm aligning myself with the voters of this district and our president. They want a conservative voice in Congress. That's right. I couldn't hear. I wasn't running then. And ask her why she's not running anymore. Who do you have money? I don't know. I, I, I try, I try, you know, you don't have, I, obviously this is not my full time job. Uh, but um, this all happens with Wayne. Wayne very, very close to me. It's not the first time I've been up here since I ran those candidates with Wayne. Uh, talks to me about, I meet them, I get to meet them, get to know them. And Wayne is a very, very a good judge of the town. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.